My aunt found this awesome cedar chest at a garage sale and generously gifted it to me for my birthday. It needed a little work, but it looks amazing now and I'm so excited to show you what I did. As it turns out, this cedar chest was veneered, meaning I didn't have the option of sanding it down and refinishing it. So instead, I decided to use gel stain on top of the current finish. This was easier and faster anyway, so I couldn't be too sad. I started by testing the gel stains on the back of the chest. I really wanted to get an idea of how well they'd work, as well as what technique was best for application. I ended up wiping on a coat of red mahogany, followed by a coat of dark walnut, since that was what I liked the most in my tests. Once I determined what finishes to use, I lightly sanded the piece. I used an orbital sander where I could, and hand sanded everything else with 180 grit sandpaper. I'm not entirely sure if I took off all the finish doing this, or if I just scuffed it a bit. Either way, I tested sanding on the back first, and thought that the gel stain was more effective than with no sanding, so that's what I went with. Then I applied the first coat of gel stain with an old t-shirt. I got a little stain on the shirt, then rubbed it into the wood until it was even and I couldn't see any streaks from the stain. I tried to work quickly, since it was a warm day and the stain soon became tacky. Once I'd coated the entire piece, I waited for the gel stain to dry before applying the second coat. It was a humid day, so it probably took about six hours before I could touch the chest without it feeling a little sticky. Once I got to that point, I put on the next coat. Well, on the first coat of gel stain, I used red mahogany. On the second coat, I used dark walnut. Maybe that's weird, but that combo was what got me a look I liked, so I went with it. I put on my second coat of gel stain the exact same way I did my first. This coat I let dry overnight before applying my top coat. The next morning, I applied Zinsser Shellac Seal Coat to the chest. I really like using this stuff as a finish because it adheres well even when there are other finishes or oils on the wood. Plus, it only takes a couple hours to dry between coats, which is a major win compared to oil-based finishes that require 24 hours between coats. It doesn't stand up to alcohol, so I wouldn't use it on a dining room table, but on a cedar chest, it makes a great top coat. If you want to learn more about top coats, check out my fabulously finished Ultimate Reference Bundle, which I've linked to in the description below. To make the shellac easier to apply, I mixed a 1 to 1 ratio of shellac and denatured alcohol. Then I applied it with a brush. It's a pretty thin coat, so brush strokes aren't really a concern, but watch out for drips as you apply. Once again, because it was humid, it took two to three hours for my shellac to dry instead of one. Once the shellac was no longer sticky, I lightly sanded, then applied the second coat. You only need to sand between the first and second coats, none of the others, because the shellac raises the green of the wood. Otherwise, shellac dissolves itself, which means it has no adhesion problems that require sanding. I brushed the second coat on as well, but because shellac dissolves itself, it's important not to overbrush or else you'll dissolve the first coat. You'll know when you're overbrushing because the brush doesn't move as smoothly. I felt it a couple times and that was my cue to move on. You can apply more coats than this, but since I expect this chest will only be lightly used and I was happy with the look, I left it at two coats of shellac. Once the wood portion of the chest was done, I worked on the top. I decided to reupholster it with drop cloth fabric. I started by wrapping the whole thing in batting like a present and securing it with staples. After it was wrapped, I trimmed the batting as close to the staples as I could so that ultimately this portion would look nice and neat. Then I wrapped the chest top in fabric. As I secured it with staples, I carefully wrapped the edge of the fabric underneath the batting. This gave it a nice, neat and professional look since this portion would be seen whenever someone opened the chest. I did both long sides, then I worked on the corners. I don't worry too much about corners. My goal is that they always look neat and intentional. This time, I did it the same way I did the batting, like a present. Then I moved on to tufting. 
I started by marking out where the tufts would go with a pencil. Basically, I did my best to make sure they were centered on the top of the chest. There were three rows, with four inches between each row and eight inches between the tufts in a row. To make the actual tufts, I stabbed my pencil marks with an awl to make a hole, then drove in a screw with a number 10 washer on it. Making the hole with the awl made this super easy, since the screw didn't get caught up in the batting or the fabric. I've never tufted anything before, and I thought this chest would be an excellent project to test it on. Some people tuft while stapling the fabric. I didn't in this project, and it worked out fine. Someday, after I experiment on a few more projects, maybe I'll do a full video on tufting, but today is not that day. Finally, I worked on the buttons. I purchased a $5 button making kit that I'll link to in the description below. The instructions were straightforward, but basically I placed the fabric on top of the mold, then pushed the button top into it. Then I folded the fabric around the top and pushed the bottom of the button into place. Sometimes I struggled with that last bit, so I'd use pliers to make sure the bottom was fully inserted. I used hot glue to secure the buttons to the chest purely because I was in the middle of a move and that's what I had available. Whatever glue you choose, make sure it's something thick that can span the space between the screws and the bottom of the buttons. Once the buttons were in place, my cedar chest was done. I love the way it turned out and I think it's absolutely perfect underneath the window. If you like it too, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And if you think you might do something similar, be sure to check out the full blog post linked in the description below. Thanks, and don't forget to hit subscribe.